provide jobs for persons, you know, yeah, it, it lets me feel like, you know, I'm really contribute, contributing to the economy of the country. Um, it's, just, it, it's just a good feeling and to produce the um, quality products, you know, to compete with the, 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 the international um, market and to produce goods that actually look much better than imported goods, it's a good feeling for me. Agroinvestment Corporation continue to scout for lands in Jamaica that are best suited for agricultural production through the National Land Agency and the Commission of Lands and also with private enterprises. So wherever there is unused government lands or private lands, Agroinvestment Corporation will profile these lands. So by now, we should all be aware of the benefits of leasing lands from the government. But once you've leased the land, how do you maximize returns? Well, knowing the soil type is important. For instance, did you know that over in the Ebony Park Spring Plain Agropark, the soil type impacts the kinds of crops that can be planted there? Ebony Park Agropark um, is about 1,100 acres, and likewise the Spring Plain, and that's roughly all the lands within there. There are areas of um, non arable areas, but there are arable areas. Arable areas amount on the Ebony Park side to about 800 acres. There's a lot of different soil types, predominantly Bonnygate clay loam. Uh, basically anything can grow here. Uh, once it requires a pH of about 6.5 to about 7, um, there are pockets where the pH might fall to about 5.5, 5.8. So if there's a crop that needs to be having a lower pH, it could, soil could be amended to facilitate that. Um, but basically anything will grow. So let's revisit our checklist. We've applied and submitted all the necessary documentations, including proof of our capacity to invest in the land. We've learned about soil types and pH balances in the soil. What's next after you've been approved? They would assign you a plot number, or they'd give you a designated area to where you'd be assigned. Um, I guess you'd view it to see maybe what you'd need to do. Uh, if it needs a bit of clearing, you might want to look at that, how you go about doing that. Um, you'll be advised as to the best way to get that done. You might want to go to the NIC um, because our water is pressurized and so the NIC supplies it. So a part of your contract would give you the ability to go to NIC with tenure of land and then they would then come and put your meter on so that you get ready supply for water. We also offer tractor services to plow, harrow, um, farrow and other activities that you might want, rotavate and so on for your lands. So we'll be able to do that. Uh, once you do that, we could tell you of maybe different cycles, crop cycles, where you might want to plant best time for certain crop. You might be able to go out of these seasons, but at least we'll be able to tell you that this crop does well in a particular season. The risk might be higher in another season, but so might be the returns. So you could get advisors to that. So local advice will be there ready for you. Meet Henry Givens a youth farmer who is a beneficiary of this initiative. He started out acquiring just five acres of land, and today, he is up to 15. Givens plants various crops at different stages, including Scotch bonnet pepper, sweet pepper, sweet potato, and Maruga red watermelons, as well as slicing and plummy tomatoes. Leasing land from the government, it, it, it is actually, it, it is beneficial, and um, at the point where I would actually want to lease more if available you know I am not employed otherwise um, so it is my it allows me to take care of my two babies um, and it allows me to eat and you know survive so it is something very beneficial I would say life here at Ebony Park it, it's it's twofold you know it's good sometimes and sometimes it's challenging one you know persons around some some persons they know what to do with their crops, for example, and they don't want to do it. Um, so, so sometimes, you know, we have a lot of pest and disease outbreak and some persons just don't want to invest the funds or do what is right to actually, you know, make the agropark much better and a much cleaner environment. And then, you know, also, um, the, the whole, sometimes there's a major issue with the whole irrigation system. Um, it costs a lot sometimes because even if you look into the pepper field, you know, sun scalding is a result of a lack of water supply sometimes. But you know, it's a blessing 
you know, and you know, there is not only negative because you know, once you have irrigation, then you know, without the irrigation, we, we, I couldn't do anything like this, none at all. Farming can be an expensive venture, but it's also beneficial. As a youth farmer, the challenges may not even be financial. Some older persons, because they're so, well, relatively young, they don't want to work with you because they said they don't want to work with a younger person. However, for do, you know, sometimes it's good to know that, you know, so for some persons that really can't afford to go into the farming as deep, that you can provide them with not only a job, but you can also assist them with um, technical, uh, you know, technical advice to improve their smaller production um, that, they, that they do as well. My advice to younger farmers or investors is that they should not be discouraged or swayed from agriculture. It is something that can be beneficial and, you know, is a, good, is a good way to make a good um, foundation for themselves and their families. So it's something that they should look into and be strong about it. That's the only way we can build our country.